You've already made your first experiences with reactive control when we introduced the light sensors and showed how we can use that to make the robot turn tower the light or avoid the light. Reactive control is one of the oldest ways to control autonomous robots. Um, one of the first examples is Walter Gray with his Tortoise robots in 1953. There are great videos uh, from that on YouTube if you want to watch those, where he built robots that were able to drive around in an environment and uh, approach light, avoid light, and things like this. And later on, they were studied by Valentino Breitenberg, who was a neuroscientist who wanted to understand how the brain works and propose that artificial intelligence can be created by simply wiring neurons so that they connect sensors and actuators and then create um, increasingly complex behaviors. He also coined the term Breitenberg vehicles, which you can see uh, here on the slide. And there are two vehicles that have their sensors directly wired to motor outputs. In the middle is a light source, and one of the vehicles has the left sensor wired to the left motor and the right sensor wired to the right motor. The other vehicle has the two crossed. And if you think about these sensors being light sensors and getting a stronger signal, the stronger the light is, you could imagine that a vehicle where those connections are not crossed would have a stronger signal to the right and thereby turn its right motor in a faster way than the left one thereby make the robot turn left and avoid the light. If you now cross those wires, you can see that the brighter sensor will drive the opposite motor and thereby turn toward the light. We can implement something like this in robots. And what we want to do is we want to focus on collision avoidance, which is a very important reactive primitive, which will usually stay with your robot even when you start implementing much higher level controls as the lowest level of safety. Now I prepared an EPUG robot in this environment we created together and what I've done is I have enabled the distance sensors, I've enabled the light sensors and I've already written code that will get us those values and currently we set the velocity of the left and the right wheel to be zero. Now let's introduce variables for those speeds we call phi left and phi right and we can set them initially to be just one rat per second. So 3.414 and this will make the robot drive straight. What we can also do is we can print the distance sensors to see what happens when the robot does that. All right, let's go and drive. And let's uh, recall the sensor here to the right is the number zero and this one to the left is the number seven which means you have these two values down here, the left column and the rightmost column. And now as the robot approaches, and we've seen that already in the distance sensor um, lecture, they become very large as soon as the robot approaches the obstacle. Now one thing we could do is we could say, we take those values and as they get bigger, we subtract them from our wheels to make the robot slow down. And then we can also hope that the robot will turn because one of those values is higher than the other. And as soon as the robot turns, of course, the one sensor will become much higher than the other and the robot will even turn faster. So we can try this very easily and we subtract the sensor to the right from the left wheel and the sensor to the left from the right wheel and of course, this will not really work because these numbers are much too high. 300 um, is not uh, in the order of magnitude of one rod per second. So what we should do is we should divide these uh, sensor readings. Now, it would be easy to do this just like that and just divide them by a thousand. This doesn't work um, if you use normal Python. For that, we introduce uh, something called NumPy. It's a library to do um, linear algebra and math computations and treat lists as vectors. And in order to do that, we say D equals NP as an array of D. And of course, we need to import NumPy. So let's do that here. We say import NumPy as NP. So I think this should do it. And let's see what happens when we run this. And yes, it does work. 
and the robot hits the obstacle at the end. We do see the NumPy arrays here and we have 0 0.56 on the left and we have 1.35 on the right. Does the robot slow down? Not very much. And maybe those values are too small. Let's multiply them with 3.14 so they get into the order of magnitude of uh, these velocities we already have and then hopefully cancel out the obstacle. All right, now we see the robot is turning, but it actually doesn't turn all the way. It gets stuck and then slides along the obstacle. So what should we do? I think we should take advantage of the additional sensors and use them as well. And in that case, we would use the sensor one and the sensor six, which are the ones that are just next to the ones we already have and see how that works. And indeed, the robot turns further, but still gets stuck a little. So let's make it turn even harder. How do we do that? Well, we take in, in a third sensor on each side, which is this one and that one. So let's see how this works. Now, as the robot approaches, the left sensor is turning it to the right then the second one and the third, and the robot beautifully avoids the obstacle. Let's see what happens when we run this in fast mode and speed up, and we see the robot is now going to the course, avoiding all the obstacles.